Hi, I'm John, the MedPod Engineer Turmel, and this is part two of the story of how Real Martin and James Turner's appeals are being treated differently by the Ontario Court of Appeal. So I wrote an explanation of James's objections to going to appeal without transcript, facta, or certificate of perfection. I said, dear Mr. Turner, and they said they accepted uh, the receipt of his correspondence, and here's what James Turner wrote to Justice Rosenberg. The correspondence in the court file should show that the transcript was rejected by the Court of Appeal Registry as improperly prepared by the Ottawa Court Reporter. Screw-ups in their office have delayed production of an acceptable transcript, no facta have yet been filed, and there should not be a certificate of completion. The Crown tells me that because I am self-represented, the certificate of completion can be skipped. But in the 2003 appeals of Terry Parker or John Turmel and Marc Paquette, the hearings could not be booked without certificates completion, and they were self-represented too. The Crown tells me that my hearing is now a fait accompli, which can only be cancelled by order of a judge, to whom I have not been given an opportunity to address my concerns. Appellant submits that the appointment for the appeal is an irregularity without a certificate of completion. Appellant seeks an order quashing the hearing date until all facta have been filed and a certificate of completion has been filed upon perfection of the appeal. Appellant seeks an explanation of how the Crown obtained a hearing date for an as yet incomplete appeal without a certificate of perfection. Jim Turner. So then he got a letter back from uh, High Ann Wynn, the Ontario Court of Appeal, which said, Dear Ms. McGuire and Mr. Turner, after reviewing letters received from both parties regarding Mr. Turner's request to adjourn the hearing date of the above noted appeal, Mr. Justice MacPherson, the president of the panel, has directed that the request for an adjournment is refused. So they're going to go ahead on the irregular appeal with all the flaws and irregularities in it. However, it can be raised again in front of the full panel at the hearing in Kingston on June 16th. So he can't decide on all these irregularities he's letting through, but maybe they're going to stop them when he's there personally. Bull. He's being railroaded. Mr. Turner, Justice Mc, uh, McPherson, has approved your request to be allowed a tape recorder in court to supplement your notes, and please confirm receipt of this message. So, Justice McPherson has been made aware that it's not James's fault that the transcript the register in, ra, insists upon are not readied by the Ottawa court reporter. He knows James wants to file a factum and that the appeal somehow got filed without a certificate of perfection, despite pointing out how the Crown couldn't file without the certificate back in 2003. And still, he insists on making James show up next week. June 16th, in Kingston, for an unfinished and illegitimate appeal. Notice the judge did not explain how the Crown got around the rules, though saying he said James could ask the whole panel again. Well, if there's a valid answer, why couldn't he have given it? That's why it sounds like he's going to be railroaded by the backroom fix. And, of course, James can ask why Real Martin is being heard by status court in Toronto for not filing his transcript, and why Real is being treated differently. Note they did not just skip the transcripts and schedule the appeal. They're having a status court look into the problems of the transcripts. Anyway, the contradiction between, between the Crown not being able to book in 2003 without a certificate of perfection, and the Crown now finding a backroom method to book the hearing without a certificate of perfection, as well as the difference in how James's transcript problem was treated differently from Real's transcript problem, and the lack of factums being filed, makes this one of the most unusual procedures in recent times. Interesting that I was expecting them to consolidate James's and Real's appeals together, since they're based on the identical aces, and instead the improperly rush ahead with one while the other is still coming up the normal track later. So it seems the Crown has found a backroom way of skipping not only the certificates of perfection, but the transcripts and the facta too. This is going to be one wild appeal, though James says they produced a 350-page appeal book full of proofs that James is using the same aces Turmel's already lost with before courts who did not see. Isn't it interesting how the Crown is stuck without a transcript, appellant and respondent facta, and certificate of perfection in Real Martin's appeal, but managed to skip it all in the case of James Turner's appeal? 
Of course, James must argue that Turnell is not a trained lawyer, so maybe he didn't explain the aces in the same right way that James is going to try. And it's the perfect time to use the quote, many judges not seeing doesn't mean all judges cannot see, barb, and point out that one court looking in the right place to see the problem is more righteous than a hundred courts who did not see because they were looking in a hundred wrong places. Answer this every time they point out that the other courts did not see what Termel was saying. Finally, James, the first point you must raise is that it takes a five-judge panel to have the jurisdiction necessary to contradict the Hitzig decision, and you don't have to ask the Chief Justice to schedule the hearing before five judges before you file your certificate of perfection. There is absolutely nothing I can do to help you if they're going to railroad you with your appeal, so it's no use that I go to Kingston with you. Of course, it doesn't really matter since you're going to take your issue higher anyway if you're ra railroaded out of there. This is just going to let you bring along the stink of their backroom shenanigans with your normal argument seeking leave to appeal against the denial of prohibition of your marijuana, marijuana charges. Now, a continuation, we found out a few days later that one of the judges died on his panel, so his appeal has been put off. And now we've also found out that the court reporter for his transcripts died. And that's why they're having trouble in Ottawa getting it organized because they're going to have to do it all again with another reporter. So those things are being fixed right now, but it looks like there's a chance they've already booked another hearing for the 18th. So we'll be finding out more soon.